Speaker for Pierre told the negative information mm -hmm. that will come out. That speaker was terrible. That was the worst conference I've ever been to, you know, because that happens to us a lot and we're prepared. But sometimes I love to just hear everybody on the blogosphere just battle it out and I don't have to say anything and just listen to them, you know, go at it and say, well, no, I think it was great. Oh, no, you didn't find the, you know, there wasn't enough food, the concession stands over there. Uh, well, they were right there and just let them kind of go at it. But so there's, you know, there are two sides to it. I mean, you definitely have to be prepared for all the negative information because it is unfiltered. But I think if they see your previous stories and as Kate mentioned, you know, your background and your readership, um, then that can help. But I'll tell you that bloggers get, um, and the reason I don't like the word blog is because a lot of traditional media uses that in a, I won't, not negatively, but oh, you're a blogger. <laughs> okay, you obviously don't think that I have any credibility, but I'm about to write a story that's going to be released before yours, so I, I'm, I'm not saying you. No, no, no. <laughs> and so whenever you tell someone, I remember when I would, I started, I started Case Street Kate four years ago, and there was, um, I really wanted to get into the art scene, and there was a theater in town that didn't want to give my writer, because it's not just me, I have writers that write for me, didn't want to give my writer a, um, a pass to review that story. Um, I will now never write a story about that group. So you also, I mean, we get our we get our panties in a lot a little bit, so <laughs> keep that in mind that these people do have a a, a, a platform that is very easily um, spread, and that they get they get their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, <laughs> on that topic embargoes for a minute because embargoes have changed drastically. Um, how do you protect the embargo when you know if something could be broken the night before it's online? Don't right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what's, your, what's your take there? Uh, it, it's one of those it, that it, that also to me always feels very dated. Like mm -hmm. it's always very like, hey, 1995, how you doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and once it's out there, it's out there. And, and I mean, our policy is we we adhere to them. But if it's going to be out there before, if someone else is going to get it and they have it out, then we're right. I mean, we're not going to pull that. It's yeah. one of those things, but it just it travels so fast, yeah. and it just doesn't make any sense to do it that way. And the whole thing goes back to the about about relationships, build relationships with your reporters, and. If you have something you want to, if you know what you want to do with it, you want to give it to them in advance, don't do it under a embargo. Talk to them. Don't do it like, here's 30 people. You all must not write about it until midnight tomorrow. Like, just call them and say, okay, look, I'm going to give you a little bit of advance of the story. We're going to release it tomorrow. And that is so appreciated. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, our whole, our lives have changed dramatically. Like, we used to, an, an old editor of mine used to love the phrase, by the by the barrel. Which basically meant that we held the cards, and you want to be in our publication, you got to come through us. And it was, I kind of wish I'd worked in that time because mm -hmm. that was a whole lot more fun, it sounds like. <laughs> um, now, like you said, I mean, anybody can write a story faster than we could, and we make decisions. We're weekly. It used to be that they would sit in editorial meetings and figure out, like, oh, okay, we've started Monday, yeah, we'll probably hold Friday, no problem, we'll, we'll loop there. Because we still have to fill this print publication, and we can't do that anymore. We still do it, but nine times out of ten, if it's a story that has any chance it's going to get broken by somebody else before Friday when we come out, we'll do it online. Because why waste the opportunity for good reporting mm -hmm. to get out there? Mm -hmm. But it's a real challenge, and it's made our job, hopefully it's made it better, I hope, but at the same time, we all have to work faster and harder. Yeah, I've never understood embargo, and maybe that's because I've never worked in an environment with mail and wax. It's harder to distribute information at a certain time, but I received embargoes through email, and I just thought to myself, I'm not going to share it because I have my own personal you know, integrity to uphold. But you know, if it's gone out to 100 people, and I know that it has, out of those 100 people, some person is bound to leak it. I'm just going to hit the forward button and send it to that one reporter who they think they want to build a relationship with. And and explode whatever embargo you're trying to do. So to me, it feels like a stunt now more than this really an effective tool for the yeah. And I think with hard copy press kits, like less than the mail hard copy press kits. Um, when both of you received one. Oh, I get them all the time. Um, Hi. 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 Or the online press kit. Let's talk about multimedia for a minute. We haven't really gone down the road of video yet. That's maybe all I have to to you. But um, how do you incorporate multimedia online when you're telling a story? How do you, you know, it's more easier to share that now. Multimedia press releases maybe on you. Know, 
to use those. Oh. So, like B like and R, like a B and R. Video is released. No. I, well, I mean, the closest thing now. I mean, we have as far as reporting additionally online. We have we always have our reporters updating our website even after they've reported the story in the newscast because we have breaks in our newscast. Obviously, we're not. 24/7, so they're asked to either report <coughs> online, uh, not not with a video, but just like get it to the web to put online. Then they'll report the story, and then there'll be a video, and then update as you go along. So they're kind of on their shift the whole time, and we try to get, as you said, the news up as quick as possible. So if we have the story, but we're not going to see it until 5 p.m., we're going to put it online. Then you'll see a reporter talk about it with any updates. So we try to do it that way, but um, and then we also do additional stuff just in the way, you know, mm -hmm. that has nothing. Like I used to do a, a segment that never hit the air. It was just to our entertainment page that was mm -hmm. for people to go online and like check out new cool websites. Mm -hmm. So we try to add new elements to draw people to the web. We have them send us pictures that we're going to feature on our morning show and. Like you said, we give away stuff on Facebook. You know, we try to just bring it all together, whether we're on the air or not. Yeah. And how about using YouTube? Uh, no, we we well, we use YouTube footage, but we don't put any of our stuff to YouTube because we always want everyone to click on our website. You know, but we uh, probably every day pull some sort of video from YouTube. Right? I I was uh, doing our 20th anniversary, and all of the final video I had was all YouTube. Because <laughs> <laughs> our tapes, couldn't, we couldn't even play any of our tapes. Three quarter inch Yeah, yeah, we had nothing to play our three quarter inch tapes, so I'm like, I was like, I was the only one who thought we could use YouTube to this day. Well, there was something cool you guys did during this apocalypse, which is you, yeah. you and that viewers share all of their videos. Yeah, that was yeah. Cool. That yeah. Yeah. surprised you didn't use that, the eye report. We, uh, yeah, that, that, you <laughs> that. that is what we, we also did this thing where we asked people to call in and we set up iStream, which is a program mm -hmm. where yeah. they would set up their little cams and we'd use it in like different video boxes and then we even called them up and was, you know, we basically just asked them what they're seeing, which is snow, but <laughs> we, uh, we try to incorporate the viewers, you know, like I said before, like, we want you to feel like you're reporting the news with us. That's how we did it with Twitter, and that's how we did it with the snow coverage. I mean, it was pretty cool. We had created a YouTube video of the council member was out on his four wheeler, like in, sh in driveways, just like plowing people's driveways in his neighborhood. <laughs> so I snapped some video of him um, just on a flip video, and then we shared it on YouTube. But he had, the, you know, Fox 5 has a major audience in the region. So just sharing it on our website wasn't enough. We uploaded it to the iStream oh, so okay. that we could share what the council member was doing, and then hopefully a few more people <coughs> would see it. We never know how many, but you know, it's expanding your audience and using video to your advantage.